So I was, I just was saying to Michelle that, and to you guys that I picked that song, it's a country Western rendition and I'm really not a country Western person, but when I heard that song, one of the things that God um, just worked in my heart is how different we all are and um, how he works in us all individually and placed us once again in the body where it pleased him. And, um, and that whatever our sphere of influence is, we are the only one that can pull off the job that he's called us to pull off. So um, if I gave this, I, I just want to think about it in terms of wherever we are in our lives, whatever it is that God has called us to do, we might just be one divine appointment away from changing somebody's life. And what I hear oftentimes from people is, you know, as I talk to them and, and um, share the word with them, and I see that so many people have reservations about their capabilities. So um, I wanted to look a little bit this morning at what does God see when he looks at us? So I sometimes I hear Christians say, if I knew more, I would dot, dot, dot. Or when I learn more, I will dot, dot, dot. And, um, and, and to be aware that we have a spiritual enemy who wants us to view ourselves as um, through the eyes of inadequacy. And God has by no means made us inadequate. inadequate. And sometimes the biggest enemy that we have is ourselves. And we let ourselves get in our own way. So... Um, what, the first thing I want to talk about when, what God says is when, when you look at the book of 1 Samuel, and you don't even have to turn there because you everybody knows this one, when, when God says, um, do not look, when he's talking to um, Samuel, the prophet, about David, and David, and Samuel was trying to figure out who it is that God wanted anointed wanted anointed. And he figured it out by looking at these, the brothers of Jesse and God said to him, um, do not look on his appearance. And he says, for God does not see as a man sees, for a man sees the outward appearance, but Yahweh sees the heart. And so when he sees our heart, what does he see? Um, in, in this day and age, and, and if you were at John's teaching this morning, it was really pretty phenomenal to look at the shift from Old Testament uh, status to uh, the New Covenant status. So in the book of Romans, we're going to start looking at some of the ways that God sees us. So in Romans chapter 6, and in verse 3, it says, or do you not know that all of us who were baptized in union with Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism in union with his death in order that Christ was raised out from among the dead through, through the glory of the Father so we could walk in a new way of life. For if we have become united with him in death, like his, we will certainly also be in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin would be made powerless, so that we could no we should no longer be, no longer serve as slaves to sin. For whoever has died has been freed from sin. So since we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised out from among the dead, dies no more, death no longer exercises lordship over us. For in that he died, he died to sin once and for all, but, but in that he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, and in union with Christ Jesus, alive to God. So 
when our Heavenly Father looks at us, he kind of sees us through the eyes of Jesus Christ. All the things that he's done for him, all of the things that he's accomplished through Jesus Christ, he looks at us with those eyes. And even though we may not have physically manifested all of those things yet, it's the promise and the hope of the future for what we will be rewarded for at that particular point in time. But it's supposed to give us um, faith and strength to be able to um, trust what he has made us capable of doing now. God tells us that he wants a relationship with us. And then he works, he works to put us at ease by telling us how he sees us. So, and, and he talks about how he sees us a great deal in the book of Psalms. So I'm gonna look at a couple of those places today and I'm gonna start first with um, Psalm 103. And in Psalm 103, in verse 10, it says, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our inequities. So that's a, that's a really good thing to know that um, that's, he doesn't look at us through the eyes of the mistakes that we've made in our lives. Verse 11 says the, that for as the heavens are high above the earth, so mighty is his covenant faithfulness upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So when we confess our sins, when we ask forgiveness, he, he forgives us. I used to struggle with this scripture, but I think it was just because I'm directionally challenged. And I kept looking at the um, east from the west and I saw it as, you know, as the globe. And I figured if you went east and kept going around the world, eventually your sin would catch back up with you. But, you know, I finally understood that he cast, and I don't even know if I'm pointing to the east yet now, but as far as the east is from the west, when it goes off in those two directions, they never touch again. And, and the one that keeps bringing up that sin to us over and over and over again is either ourself or our adversary that wants to distract us from the calling that God has placed on our lives. Verse 13 says, like a father has compassion on his children, so Yahweh has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our makeup. He remembers that we are dust. Mankind's days are like grass as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind passes over it, then it is no more, and its place no longer remembers it. But the covenant, of faith, the covenant faithfulness of Yahweh is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him. Yes, his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant. Yes, those who remember to obey his instructions. So he is faithful to us. And if we keep that in mind, I, you know, and I know that many people in this group, some of you aren't, but many people are our parents. And so, you know, I want, as we look at some of these things, I want you to think about the love of a parent to a child. And there is something that happens when um, you have a child that, that changes everything. I don't know what mechanism the Lord kicks off in our hearts or in our brains, but you know, I just remember that for a long time before I got married and before I had children, um, I worked with children and I loved the children that I worked with. But when I held my child in my arms for the first time, there was something that just, you know, that just clicked. And it's a whole, um, it's a kind of love that if we have it and God tells us that he is our father, that's something that we should realize the depth of the love that he has for us. He sacrificed his only begotten son that we could have everlasting life. One of the favorite scriptures that people like to go to is uh, John 3, 16, where it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son um, so whoever should believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he calls us his children. You know, we are the children of the Lord. 
if we have believed on Jesus Christ, and if we have believed that God raised him from the dead, and if we've made him the Lord of our lives. If you go to 1 John chapter 3, and in verse 1, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. On account of this, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, we are children of God now, and it has not yet re been revealed what we will be, but we know we know that when it is revealed, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. So um, it, God's made this promise to us. He's made this covenant agreement for those of us that are born again of his spirit and he will keep keeps his promises. He's faithful. And so knowing all how God feels about us, we do have an enemy and he does. <laughs> And he is aware that as we walk in confidence with the Lord, that we share that great joy that he's given us in our lives with others. So part of what he does is try to make us think that we're inadequate and we're incompetent and that we can't do the things that God says he can do, uh, that we can do. But we have to remember that um, that God is with us and if he and the Lord Jesus Christ have given us the ministry of reconciliation, that they didn't just give it to us and throw us out in the world to do it without their help and without their guardianship and without their protection. And just as if you, as you work with a young child, well, first of all, I love it when John says that he gave nobody baby Holy Spirit. So we all have, um, a full dose of Holy Spirit. And my daughter, Erin, who's here this morning, when she was a child used to astound me because I knew she walked with the Lord because when she would approach me about something that I knew the answer should be no, the wisdom that came out of her mouth made me aware that God must be working in this girl and cause I would have never looked at it from this angle. And so one of the things that it taught me was it doesn't matter what age the, a person is, if they walk with God, and Aaron, you got a lot of stuff because you walked with the Lord that I would have said no to. Um, but, but we do, we have that, um, he's there with us. And I just remember as a parent too, um, I have two daughters. I have Aaron and Carrie, and they're about 18 months apart in age. And um, I wanted them to grow up and be independent and to be self-confident, but I wanted to protect them. So I, I'm thinking of an incident when they were in first and third grade and our house was about three blocks from the school. And they tried to tell me that they could walk home from school by themselves. And all the kids in the neighborhood walked home by themselves. And so there would be a huge crowd of kids walking down the street. But I was their mother, and I needed to make sure they were safe. But they kept asking me over and over again, can, I walk, can we walk home by ourselves? So finally, I said, OK, you can walk home by yourself. But I was still their parent, and I still wanted to guard and protect them. So what I did was I walked two blocks from the school, and I hid behind a tree. And I watched from behind the tree till I saw them. And as they got closer to me, I ran down the block, I mean, I ran down another block and hid behind another tree. And I stood there and watched to make sure they were safe and that they could maneuver and they could get through that process. And then finally, I went home and went into the house. And, and but I could see them still, and I could see they were in, you know, that they were safe. And so um, they, not, they rang the bell and I opened up the door and said, oh, I didn't know you all were home already. And so they were so proud of themselves and talked about how they had done this by themselves. And it just, you know, it just reminded me of how God maybe steps us through things too. He, you know, he helps us and he protects us and guides us as we take those steps to walk with him. 
So, but we've got to walk in order for him to be able to, to be able to teach us those things. And um, he wants us to be knowledgeable. He, walk, he tells us that he's with us, he guides us, he protects us. And so if you just take a minute and turn to Ephesians chapter one, and I feel like I'm speed talking, so I'm gonna try to slow down here. So in Ephesians chapter one, in verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of him. Since the eyes of your heart have been enlightened, and you know, John taught this morning, he was talking about that heart of flesh, you know, that, uh, that our heart should be tenderized and, and be, be receptive to what the spirit of God is doing within us. So, and it says in verse 18, so that you will know what the hope, that you will know the hope to which you've been called. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among, among his holy ones? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, which according to the working of his mighty strength, that he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him out from among the dead and seated him and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So God wants us to be aware um, that he, that our hearts, um, that he's enlightened our hearts and he's given us the capability to do the things that he's called us to do. And he wants us to, um, grow in faith and confidence. I just, this morning at the morning fellowship too, there was a prophecy that I just kept, I jotted down from John Vanderbeer, which I felt was really going to, um, fit what we were learning today. And so that prophecy, this was the prophecy that John shared. People keep positive, keep expectant, keep optimistic of what might be. Remember there was a time when there was an adversary against me named Saul, and yet his life was turned around by me. So don't underestimate what I can do in every situation whether it be difficult with difficult people or the problem or problem hardship, be positive, positive, be expectant. Know that in things I work on your behalf for I love you and I want the best for you. I just ask you to trust me. So, and I thought that was pretty powerful because he's not asking us to be perfect he brought up one of the most difficult times this, the, the, that he struggled through with Saul. Um, if you remember, uh, as he met him on the road to, um, to Damascus and he asked him, why are you persecuting me? But Jesus Christ did not share the word with him. He sent him to a believer that would teach him the things that he needed to know. So he stands with us to do the job he wants us to do, but he will not do the job. We have to trust him enough to be able to step out and do the job. So I would just want, he knows us so intimately. He knows each and every one of us. He knows things sometimes about us that we don't even know. So I want to go to, um, Psalm, I think it's Psalm 139. I'm going to read a large portion of that. And it says in verse one, O Yahweh, you have searched me and you know me. You yourself know how, know when I sit down and when I stand up. You discern what I think from afar. You measured out where I go and when I rest. Yes, you are acquainted with all my road. For an utterance does not, does not have to be on my tongue. Behold, O oh Yahweh, you know it all together. You have enclosed my back and front. 
and you have laid your hand on me. That made me think about me and my kids and the trip home from school. I was before, in front of them, behind them, on their sides. God does the same thing for us. He is right there surrounding us to keep us safe. Verse six says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high, I am unable to attain it. Where could I go from your spirit? Or where could I flee from your presence? So even when we're busy beating ourselves up or thinking that we're not worthy or we're not capable of doing the things that he's called to do, he's still there with us. Um, verse eight says, if I ascend up into heaven, you are there. And if my bed is in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning dawn, if I settle in the farthest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will hold me. If I say surely darkness will cover me, the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you for the night shines like day and the darkness and the light are alike. Verse 13, for if you yourself created my innermost parts, you wove me together in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you for I am amazingly and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and my soul is abundantly aware of this. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret skillfully woven together in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo, and in your scroll they are written, the days that were formed before there was any of them. Yes, how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How mighty is their sum. If I could count them, they would be more numerous than the sand. When I wake up, I am still with you. So God, you know, God wants us to know um, that, that he's always there with us and that um, whatever it is that he calls us to do, that we are capable of doing it. And sometimes we can look at other people and we can see their capabilities and, oh, you, Donna is a wonderful teacher or, um, you know, Michelle knows a whole lot about Holy Spirit, and I don't get it. Or Doug is a master of covenants. I wish I knew about uh, covenants. I can look at what other people have and miss what God gave me, miss where he placed me um, to, to expound and to talk about um, what I am capable of. So some of the things that we looked at this morning about how God sees me, he sees me when he looks at me as in union with Christ. And that's good company to be in. So, you know, it's like, hey, that's my big brother and God, you know, he's there with me and God sees me through what he has completely accomplished in him and what he plans to accomplish me in me in totality in the future. He sees me as his child. And, you know, I, did, I mentioned that before, what it's like to, to have a parent and to have that kind of love that a parent has for a child. And to think that if we have that, if we can have those feelings and emotions and we're made in the image and likeness of God, the way God feels about us and the way he looks at, at us has to be um, extremely bigger than that. Uh, so, so he doesn't want us out there falling on our face and he will help us. And there are gonna be times that we fall down. And as a parent, you know, you watch your child fall down and you see if they're able, gonna be able to get up and if they're gonna be able to maneuver. And if they can, you let them do it. And if not, you scoop them up and help them. And that's kind of how he treats us. God sees us. Um, he, see, he looks at me with loving eyes and he lavishes upon me abundant gifts, which are, and he's rich, in his grace that he gives to us. So, and, and he sees me as a joint heir with Jesus Christ and ready to inherit heavenly riches. So, and you know, I don't know if any of you ever had a, a, a parent or a dad that had a really important position and he was busy and didn't have time for a lot of stuff, but 
if you called him and you were his child, he was on it. I know for, um, for my children, when they were growing up, I had a job, well, we didn't have cell phones when they were kids, so I'm talking about how old I am. <laughs> but um, if they called my office and I wasn't in the office, when the secretary heard that they were looking for me, she would come and get, them, get me right away. Or if they called me and I looked down and saw their name on the phone, I'd answer right away. And to this day, if one of my children calls me in the middle of the day, I answer right away. Um, and I don't do that for everybody because I have other responsibilities. But if it's my child, I'm going to be right there. And I also do that for my sisters too. And my sister, Linda, you and Valerie both know, if you call me in the middle of the day, I pick that phone up pretty fast. And that's, that's how God sees us as well. Um, when we call him, he and the Lord Jesus Christ are gonna be able to help us, be there to help us. He also sees me as his handiwork. And when we were reading in Psalms, he says he knew, he saw, he knew us when we were being knit together in our mother's womb. So he's known us better and longer than even our mothers have um, because he saw that whole formation and he had dreams about what we would be. And um, because he sees all these wonderful things about us, we actually should really stop beating ourselves up and thinking that we're incapable or we don't know enough or, you know, and be able to trust that wherever he is with us, whatever situation he's placed us in, that he will be there to make sure that we can do the right thing, that we can do what he's called us to do. And if we mess up, if we don't get the message right, if we don't uh, do it, um, in, in a perfect way, he doesn't beat us up and say, oh, I'm not gonna give you another chance. He just helps us to maneuver through that. And because he sees us that way, he's given us a couple of things that we need to do. So I wanna close out this morning in uh, Colossians. And in Colossians chapter three, and verse 12, and I love the way this verse starts. It says, therefore, as God's holy and beloved chosen ones. That's how he sees us. We're his holy and beloved chosen ones. It says, put on bowels of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, just as the Lord forgave you, so you must also, you must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of completeness. And let the peace of Christ be the umpire in your hearts. For indeed, you were called as one body to this peace and always be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom and with, uh, with singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your heart to God. For whatever you do in word or de deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God our Father through him. So he's given us, you know, someone took the time to tell us what God had done for them in their lives. And we had at some point in time in our life, a divine appointment that changed the course and the direction of our lives. God said he wants everyone to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And he puts us here in our place in the body to help make those things come to pass. And so we, sometimes we need to get out of our own way, not be intimidated about what somebody's gonna think if I say this to them or if I share the word with them or, because I think sometimes we'll just be greatly surprised at the response we get. And sometimes people will act like we're crazy, but the long-term effect is that when we see the Lord face to face, he will probably say, well done, my good and faithful servant and have rewards for us that will last at least 
4,000 years throughout the millennium. So um, we, we just should never think, um, we, we all have a story of deliverance. We ha all have a story of grace. We all have a story of what God has done for us. And when we share those with people, and that's what God asks us to do, then we can make a difference. We should never get to the place where we don't know it. We think we don't know enough to share or because um, we all know what God has done for us and the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. So um, once again, none of us has baby Holy Spirit. And sometimes standing up and speaking up for the Lord can be a little bit scary, but courage is doing something you're afraid of, even though you're afraid. It's just walking right through. And so sometimes we just need to walk right through and remember that God and the Lord Jesus Christ placed us in the body where it pleased them. So just like the country singer I started out with, I'm not going to meet anybody at a country western uh, concert. It's just not going to happen. But um, somebody else will, and that may be where they need to work. And there are a lot of places that I'm never going to be, and there are a lot of places, people I'm never going to meet but somebody else in the body will. And so we can't think that it's up to somebody else to do the job that God called us to. Uh, even though we have difficulty sometimes seeing what our gifts and talents are, we need to just uh, trust that wherever we are, when we take the step to open our mouths, God is gonna make sure that we have what we need in order to accomplish the task that he set before us. So. Um, just want to close out with um, a song. And like I said, I can't remember which one of my grandchildren introduced me to this song, but um, I thought it was, it's pretty telling because sometimes we just let things get in our way. So this is on the whole other side of the spectrum from the country western. So um, <laughs> Michelle, if you would share that song. <laughs> 